shows um, that have been just shredded. And you also hear shrieks of, I, I will never be good enough. I, I can't be good enough. Where are the shrieks coming from? They don't seem to be coming from any particular direction, so everywhere and nowhere all at the same time. Okay. Uh, I do a quick look around the room. If I could see if I could determine where that came from. There is nothing else in the room, but you still hear the shrieks. Are they getting louder or are they staying the same? Um, they were at a pretty high volume. They're at, they're definitely not getting louder. I close the wardrobe. Yeah. <laughs> they don't seem to stop. Oh great. Uh okay, I'm gonna quickly investigate some of the, the tattered remains in the uh wardrobe. You open the and I wanna see if they hold any memories in uh if there's anything uh, else that's odd or uncanny. Yeah. I mean, other than the fact that they're they're ripped up. This looks yeah. like it was a woman who who had been driven to madness um po possibly from the there's a train coming um possibly by driven to madness by the the bride who got the tears um beauty you you don't really know um you just continue as you're looking at them they seem to be shredded in a, a very uniform manner um and you continue to hear those shrieks uh i try to shout out uh to the creature that's making the sound and i ask uh, if there's anything i can do to ease their suffering or why they're shrieking so you didn't see her i will never be good enough and this time um you feel the sound specifically coming from behind you and there's i hear it i hear the train, it's, the train. it's right behind me <laughs> it's the train <laughs> hate you all <laughs> that would be a cool way to boy. like work right into the story though well no you hear the oh, yeah i i quickly turn around and uh she's right there right you turn around to see this haggardy haggardly haggardly what haggardly. haggard yes a uh, haggardly old woman who's just got wrinkly skin and is pretty much the exact opposite of the woman that uh, the witch saw. Um, so I, I ask her, who, who aren't you good enough for? I won't. I will never be good enough for Bluebeard, and if you're not caref careful, neither will you. Why do you remain in this torment? Because I will never be good enough to to see the light of the uh, see the light of day. I will never be good enough. Well, I mean, yeah. If you keep telling yourself that, then obviously you need to have some self confidence, woman. Um, she goes over. <laughs> she walks past you, or continues behind you because you're still by the wardrobe. Over to what looks like a, a makeup desk. And begins to pull out powders and, and makeup from the desk and, and, and comes closer to you with all the makeup. Was she going to give me a makeover? I don't know. Can we investigate what's on the uh, makeup table? Sure. Um, well, she's taking a bunch she... of the makeup off the makeup table, um, but it's kind of, it's got a mirror in the back. Um, there's a chair by it, um, there's also a hand mirror on the desk as well. Uh, yeah, I investigate the hand mirror. Okay. Um. And I want to see if there's anything odd or uncanny about it and whose item it is. Yeah. Um. 
Well, when you pick up the mirror, you see that it is also gold inlaid with lots of gems, um, and, and rubies, um, and it kind of matches the same style as the tiara, um, but when you look at your reflection in the mirror, um, one half of your face turns into a face that is, is beautiful like the first woman who got the tiara but the other half looks like the old woman and it looks haggardly and gaunt and wrinkly and old and this is the uh old is it the old woman's item or is it a... oh you asked who whose it was yeah yeah um you suspect that it um, because it looks just like the tiara, um, it is the woman's from before. So, I mean, I think I could propose a truth here, because I really think that th this lady's clearly gone insane through sheer vanity, and uh, she's not only tortured herself, uh, but continues to torture herself in the, uh, in the afterlife. Before we do that, can I try to care for her? I mean, if you want to. Yeah, I want to try to care for her. I want to, you know, she would <coughs> be really down on herself, and she kind of, she has this vanity and all this makeup and stuff, so I just want to sit her down at the vanity and, and do her makeup really pretty real quick. And then I want to, I want to make her beautiful, and then I want to show her her reflection and say, look how gorgeous you are, and you look so pretty, and all you needed was a little color on your cheeks. Okay. Um... And then I also, like, mix a very fine powder into a little bit of the face makeup that um, has a bit of a kind of a, a self-love sort of vibe to it. <laughs> gotcha. Cool. Um, so, she, she looks at you or after you do all this and looks in the mirror and, and kind of picks is kind of goes for the um hand mirror um but ca the reflection in the mirror catches her eyes and she says to you you've played some tr trick on me uh assure me that that i i am beautiful or assure me that you haven't used any um any sort of magics or illusions on me don't worry honey we can take care of you yeah i'd like to use my face move okay right okay and take off the tiara that is slightly silver and very thin but has a prominent sapphire jewel <coughs> okay place it upon her head okay and say look how pretty you are you're my dear um she smiles at this um, and seems content, like, maybe she will never be beautiful enough, but at least in this moment, she is, is pretty and, um, and, and beautiful, at least to herself. Aww. Yeah, I, I still stand by my truth I proposed earlier. Uh, she's crazy. And through sheer vanity, she has basically created this, like this this room for herself uh, to beat herself down even until past her death. So I want to take the hand mirror as a token of faithfulness. Interesting. Cool. Uh, you're you're asserting that it's like not Bluebeard's fault that she feels that way and that is yeah i, I feel crazy. like yeah i feel okay. like this is entirely of room okay making. yeah no, okay i got it i just wanted to make sure i understood your you what you were trying to get across with this but yeah I'm with you on that i just want to feel her make her feel good before we left <laughs> maybe she can rest now in peace a little bit i mean not all horrors have to be dead i'm just throwing that out there oh so you're saying she could still be alive Maybe, maybe not. Oh, 
Okay. Uh, well, I choose to believe she's still crazy, even if she's still alive. I I, I never said she wasn't crazy. I made her pretty well, anyway. Um, who you ha you have to hand the key uh, or the ring off to the Fatel? Yeah, I'm going to Fatel. <sighs> oh crap! I might. And then, and then we mark uh, one less trauma, right? Yep, you mm -hmm. heal one. For everyone. Yep. Yeah. Okay. I might call it a quit at quits after this, guys. What? Yeah. I... Well, no, not in the middle of our game after our game. I is... You mean give up on the stream? Yeah, I'm I'm crashing. Oh man. Yeah, I uh, PM'd you. I gotta leave the top of the hour. Uh, seen Discord. I have not seen it yet. <laughs> Seeing that glazed look in your eyes. I don't know. <laughs> ah. You're at T minus thirty. We may, depending on the next room, be able to be done with the game. The game yep. Uh, the final key, or possible final key, that we see is very sensual and very curved. It is somewhat flesh-toned and very, shall I say, yonic in a sense. Okay. It appears to the bride it has some form of meaning and yearning and want of lust. It's very warm and passionate, possibly with a burning fire of intimacy. It has a very beautiful inlaid jewel in the center that radiates outward, the edge of the key, and the uh, the front of the key. What's it called again? The uh, not the keys. Um, is it the keys? For what? The the teeth. Yeah, teeth of the key. The teeth of the key. Okay. Uh, are very symmetrical, yet in balance at the same time. As I would approach a door, and do you describe it, Rumi? Um, I do. So it's a curvy key with jagged teeth? Uh, yes. Very Yonic in the description. Um, what material is it made out of? Possibly flesh. Possibly flesh. Ooh. Okay. I have some ideas. Uh... We're totally walking to a flesh room right now. It's all your fault. Damn it. I mean, you made the key out of flesh. You keep, you guys keep handing me gifts. What am I supposed what to? What can I see? It's your birthday. What am I supposed to do? Oh, and uh, you know what Yonic means, right? Mm, no. Um, vaginal. Like you know, okay. phallic means it looks uh, like a. Gotcha. Thing. That makes sense. No. Um. Yonic means vaginal. That makes sense. Um, so you enter this room, uh, or the door, um, seems, even though the the key is is flesh toned and and curvy, much like the shape of a woman's body, the door seems steel and clean and clinical. What do you do at the door? I would like to. Insert the key and slowly, tenderly turn it. Okay. And open the door most with a graceful touch. As I would like to look inside and see what I see with my beautiful eyes. Uh, Animus seems to be disgusted with Fatal all of a sudden. By the way. <laughs> well, Fatal's got to work with what she's got. Well, she still can. Oh, dang! Um, so in this room... You see what appears to be a, an operating table of sorts. You see, or a, I guess it's a table of sorts. You see restraints on the table. Um, 